So I have a question. Over the last 20 to 30 years, how many good TV series or good movies were based off video games? While you think on that, let me show you this. I'm going to kick Bison's ass. I don't think so. You have to get out. Don't listen to anything she says. She's If our people are to survive, we must make a home here. Whatever happens, I remember hearing stories about witches. I'm Sonic, a little ball of super energy in an extremely handsome package. On my... The city cannot be controlled. Then we have to go in by force. Who the hell is this? I'm a friend of Sully's. Sully doesn't have any friends. I should know I'm one of them. I'm happy to announce The Last of Us on HBO Max is absolutely, is absolutely sensational. And it's just must watch TV. I'm not gonna bore you with the backstory. The show's based off a video game. If you haven't played it, play it. I did a review on part one just last year. If you haven't seen it, check it out. So The Last of Us, it's basically post-apocalyptic modern day. It's 2023 and the world went to shit. So the world was bombed. The world was bombed because of the infected. You can think of the infected like zombies, but instead of being infected by a virus, these zombies were infected by fungi. BBC actually had a documentary on it. So in the TV series, the fungi originated in Indonesia. I think it was some sort of, you know, mutant strain that infected humans. You know, I love the beginning of the first episode. It basically outlined the difference between a virus and fungi. Viruses can make us ill, but fungi can alter our very minds. You're telling it where to go, what to do, like a puppeteer with a marionette. But it doesn't let its victim die, no. It... It keeps its puppet alive by preventing decomposition. And there are no treatments for this, no preventatives, no cures. They don't exist. It's not even possible to make them. It's just really interesting stuff. After the world's infected, the whole world is bombed. There's pockets of these quarantine zones located across the US. The one specifically from the show is located in Boston. That's where the story starts and it focuses around a character named Joel. Joel is played by Pedro Pascal, who, you know, has um, a few notches on his belt when it comes to block Buster hits. You got Game of Thrones, The Mandalorian. We're just gonna forget about Wonder Woman 1984. <laughs> I just didn't care for it too much. Joel is a smuggler with a complicated past. He's just trying to get by and he's very cynical and he has a very dark outlook on life. He looks at the world as something that just needs to be endured. He has a partner named Tess and they kind of run this, you know, tag team smuggling service in and out of the quarantine zone. And it's very dangerous because these quarantine zones, they're ran by, they're ran by Fedra. Fedra is the end all be all authority following the Cordyceps outbreak, a military arm of the government that has essentially replaced it. Strict forms of law have been established in every quarantine zone to maintain order and discipline like curfew. To put it simply, you leave the quarantine zone, you die. You enter the quarantine zone, you die. You smuggle things out, smuggle things in, you die. You touch the guard, you die. Hey, excuse me. Hey. What? 
call me. And also within these quarantine zones is kind of this freedom fighter group called the Fireflies. All you need to know is that they're very anti Fedra. And so you kind of have these two groups that are constantly at war with each other. And then there's Ellie. Ellie is played by Bella Ramsey. For those who do not know her, she's also from Game of Thrones. And she plays a very fierce Lady Mormont. You said she was a great beauty, I'm sure you will be too. I doubt it. My mother wasn't a great beauty or any other kind of beauty. She was a great warrior though. I don't plan on knitting by the fire while men fight for me. I might be small, Lord Glover, and I might be a girl, but I am every bit as much a northerner as you. Indeed you are, my lady. No one and is And I don't need your permission to defend the north. And I have to say, um, I don't think they could have picked a better Ellie. Bella Ramsey hit every nail, played every note. She really exemplified who I thought Ellie would be in real life. She's crass, vulgar, and uses violence without hesitation. Count slowly and clearly from one to 10. One, two, three, four. Slowly. Five, six, seven, eight, fuck you. All off. Risk my job for half off out of your fucking mind. She's also a kid and shows a sense of wonderment and enthusiasm over the outside world. And then there's Marlene. She doesn't have a really big role, but all you really need to know is that she is the leader of the Fireflies. Marlene is the reason why Ellie is with Joel. Joel is smuggling Ellie out of the quarantine zone to somewhere out west, and I'm gonna stop right there. <laughs> Bill is played by Nick Offerman. So in the TV series, it's not exactly like the game. The creators and producers, they wanted to adjust certain aspects of the story. So I'm gonna focus on that. Bill's character in the show, Bill is basically, he's a one man army. He knows how to use guns. He's somewhat of an engineer and he's a farmer. My character in Stardew Valley couldn't do all that. I will say episode three, it's one of the best episodes I've seen in modern television. It was just so beautifully written, wonderfully executed, and it just, <laughs> it just got me in the feels. There are certain milestones that I thought would happen. And let's just say this show zigged when I thought it was gonna zag. It was good. Episode three was really good. What's unfortunate is that HBO releases the shows, I think every Sunday, and that's when I release my videos-ish, you know, ish. I wanted to include episode four into my review, <laughs> but I don't think that's gonna happen. Moving on, so the dislikes, I really don't have any right now. I really don't have any. If I had to nitpick, I can probably come up with a few things, but it's just so, it's just so minute that it really doesn't even matter. And it's really not even worth mentioning. So the likes, um, probably number one is the OST or the soundtrack. So the Last of Us soundtrack is created by <sighs> Gustavo Santoa, Santoa Lalia. Gustavo did a really good job doing the soundtrack for the game and as well as the series. It's sad, it's regretful, and beautiful all at the same time. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> And I really got to give credit to HBO. I'm glad HBO took the property. You could really tell that they took care and did their research of the source material. You know, companies out there that just take properties left and right to see what works to sell, you know, to turn it around and make a quick buck. But it feels as if they know what they're doing. They're taking something that works and they're building on it. And I really can't wait to see what happens next. And I don't even know what's going to happen next. The last of us, woo! But that kind of wraps up my review. I really don't know what else to say other than watch the series. If you're not watching the series, play the game. If you're not playing the game, find a way to watch the series. This is my one dislike, and it's not even a dislike. You know how Netflix has the entire season when something comes out and you can just binge watch it? I wish I could binge watch The Last of Us. I wish I could binge watch it. I don't like waiting every week. It's killing me.